another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. I'm Carolyn Topol, and I'm here today with my wonderful co-host, Rachel Arnett. Hello, hello. And we have a special guest today, Donna Cohen. Welcome. Who is here <laughs> as an expert because we are going to be talking about super fans and the wonderful world of fandoms. Sorry, I got really excited. <laughs> and I'm glad you did because each of us are super fans of different shows. And as you'll find out through our episode today, none of the shows have any association with the other, yet we all like each other, which yeah. shows that tolerance <laughs> is in every area of the world. So to start with, I'm actually going to start with our guest, Absolutely. Donna, who is here today because she is a super, super fan of a show called... When Calls the Heart. When Calls the Heart. And this stars... Lori Laughlin, who was known best for Full House, she was Aunt Becky, um, and Erin Krakow, who is sort of the central focus of the show, isn't she? So tell us a little bit, what is When Calls the Heart about? Because this has gotten a very big following over the years. It has. Um, so the main story is, um, it's based off books written by Jeanette Oak. Oh. And um, the main story, how it starts, is like in 1910. And this sort of rich woman, school teacher, young person, um, comes into this sort of coal mine town to be a school teacher. And she doesn't know that there was a big accident. And many of the women became widows and lost children in this big accident. And so wow. here she comes. And she's very much out of her element. And mm -hmm. then a lot of things happen from there. And then there's other characters they bring in. And it's like getting to know a town. You get to know a town. From the beginning, and, and mm -hmm. as the audience here, starting with her from the beginning, getting to know mm -hmm. them? Yes. Okay. She's sort of the first person that you really kind of get to know. And mm -hmm. then, of course, there's the Mountie that comes in, played by Daniel <laughs> Lissing. Um, there's a lot of that that yeah, goes on. Yeah, there's a lot of sighs. sighing. Um, <laughs> and then there's all these other people, and there's really cute little children, and it's just a whole town. And then you mm -hmm. have sort of your bad guy who... He's sometimes a bad guy, but sometimes not a bad yeah. guy. So you sit there and you're like, what? So, yeah, it's very, it's incredible. It's now, incredible. what I have understood, and I was a big fan personally of period pieces such as um, Little House on the Prairie mm -hmm. and The Waltons, mm -hmm. um, which also had surprisingly large followings in their day. Everybody thought they would be sort of niche shows, but they weren't. They became really broad range, broad appeal. Mm -hmm. um, and When Calls the Heart, has become a very broad appeal show. Mm -hmm. um, I've been looking online a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that super fans of When Calls the Heart are called? Hearties. <laughs> yes, Hearties, H-E-A-R-T-I-E-S. -E -E yes, yeah, so you can learn to make a heart. You know, if you're gonna be a hearty, you okay. can to make the heart. <laughs> and so tell us some of the things you've done um, in the name of your super fanship. Okay, well first I learned to tweet, which I didn't even know what tweet meant or what it was a couple of years ago. Seriously, it, mm -hmm. it's a thing. And um, I can't tweet on my computer, but I do tweet quite well on my little phone. Um, so I learned to tweet. But the bigger thing is I found this um, fan page. You mm -hmm. know how you go? Okay. So you go to the little page and you join. And I think I joined, there were maybe like 4,000 people, and now there's almost 60,000 people. That's a huge fandom on a, on a it's, page, yeah, yes. It's, a and, and they're active. It's an active group, and you can do all sorts of things. So I happened to join a pen pal thing. So I got like all these beautiful, wonderful cards for the holidays, and I sent cards, and um, they had this very big gathering, three times the HFRs, which are the Hardy Family Reunions. Um, and that's where I, <laughs> isn't that cute? I know, it's so family. So these are like conferences in, in honor of the show. Right. For so the like fans. Mini, mini cons. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. I've never, yes, I'm going to vote that. <laughs> 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 I've never been to a con thing, but I'm going to yeah. vote that's sort of the same yeah. thing. It's like a weekend and you can meet the people and the mm -hmm. um, So you, you get meet to meet the, the stars, correct? The, mm -hmm, the cast and the writers and some executive producers and... People from Hallmark come. The Hallmark executives are quite involved. They tweet too. Um, and yeah, it's like amazing. Because meet, this is a Hallmark show. This right. is a Hallmark show. It is Correct. a Hallmark show. Thank goodness for Hallmark. We, they're, they're so wonderful to us. They're very mm -hmm. nice to the Hardys, truly. 
That's great. They and really I understand are. at one point they were almost thinking of um, ending the show and <gasps> the Hardys sort of got online and, and tweeted <laughs> a whole lot. And Hashtag, that show what was are still you thinking? <laughs> Hashtag, don't you dare. Yeah, there you yes, go. Exactly. exactly. A lot of people probably learned to tweet for that moment, too. No, every, really. They actually had like a little thing online you could go to on the page, and they taught you how to tweet. Because, not. I mean, I can't say none of us knew. Of course people knew. But mm -hmm. a lot of us who might not be of the younger age group, um, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So now we all tweet. And, and, and for those few people who are still trying to resist, Tweeting is done on the Twitter social media yeah. platform. That's great fun. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to write a lot because they limit your characters. I think that's the best thing about yeah. Twitter mm -hmm. is you don't get a speech mm -hmm. because there's no yeah. room. True story. Say what you say. So now when you went to this event, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what you did. Um, and some so, of your toys, because we have souvenirs. I'll show you my toys. So I went three times, and um, oh, wow. we went okay. to Canada, which uh, until when calls the heart, honestly, I didn't travel like that. So this is like a big adventure. This whole Hardy thing is a big adventure in my life. Um, so I got to go and I got to meet the other Hardys that I talked to on different pages and mm. my pen pals and okay. whatever. And so um, the highlight for me personally, well, there were two. One is the autographs and all that. It's very mm -hmm. nice. And meeting the Hardys was like the biggest thing. The other I like could just go around and say, oh my gosh, I know you. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. So it's like meeting your pen pals. It's like meeting your family. Like their fam like really oh. their family. I know it sounds so crazy. I'm too old to fangirl, but I totally fangirl over this. It's okay. <laughs> um, I don't think it's ever too old to fangirl. Thank you. I think so. Thank you. No um, argument here. Yeah. I'm a super fangirl more than one time over. <laughs> And then the biggest thing for me was to go on to the set because it's like a town. You, oh. you literally walk into a Oh, that's a wonderful. Town. So they took you on the set of One Calls the Heart? Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. That's really it cool. is very exciting. And my very favorite writer was there all three times, so that was like super exciting. And um, Brian Bird, who's one of the executive directors, mm -hmm. is always right. there. And he's also a creator and a writer and probably 4,000 things <laughs> that I don't know. Um, He's the Stephen Muffat of When Calls the Heart. Yeah, I, no, I got yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, and really, and they, they are so all so gracious with their time. Mm -hmm. Like, so gracious. And um, last time for the pictures, um, Lori and Jack Wagner had to leave early. So they didn't want anybody to miss out. So they literally walked through the line and grabbed everybody's phone and took selfies with everybody. Aww. Who would do that? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I know. They're, really, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And my friends that I've made around here in this area, um, we have like a little message thing. I'm not sure what that's called. Messaging. A okay. Facebook. It's through Facebook, but it's something else. A Messenger. Facebook Messenger group. Group. There we go. There we go. So we have one of those. And mm -hmm. we literally chat like every day. Every Which is day. fabulous. We just make sure, how, how's you doing? What do you do? And everybody okay when mm -hmm. there's a storm, you know? They're like my fam. They're like my second family. Well, and, and I think that's something that people don't talk about a lot with fandoms. Is certainly it develops around the show, but you end up developing real connections a lot of times with the people that you're discussing with. Totally. A, it, you develop a community that yes, maybe centered around when calls the heart or another show, but you eventually say, oh hey, you're from Ohio. Mm -hmm. I visited Ohio once. <laughs> hey, how's that storm? <laughs> and you eventually start to act, really develop. Close relationships sometimes. Well, and if you think about it, a friendship or any relationship starts with one thing in common. That's true. Good and you're starting with something that you're bo all, both or all passionate about in this mm -hmm. case. And even my husband will watch with me. He'll only watch once, granted. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a limit. Like one. Well, he, that's so he won't limit. watch it on He's a repeat? He's one-episode guy. No. Okay, okay. I, on the other hand, yeah, I'm there all the time. My favorite episode, I watched like a gazillion times over. I'll watch it. I watched it last night. You know what? It's comforting. It's a nice, relaxing, comforting sort of show. Well, especially if you're feeling like this is family. Mm -hmm. It gives you that warm feeling. Mm -hmm. So now, just to say, Donna has brought some really special things um, in front. I'm going to let her hold this up. Tell us what this cute thing is. So this is autographed by Lori and Dan and Aaron, and I won it. It was one of those caption this things 
Do you, you know, you, you caption a picture. Oh, yeah. Um, and I won. I actually won. I couldn't believe it. And they sent me this in the mail. And it has oh. little hearts in it, little paper hearts. Because it's I a know. hearty. It's a hearty thing. It's so sweet. And now. <gasps> ah, and this is a script. They gave it to everybody. I think it was at the second family reunion. Oh. I'm going to guess it was. Um, and it's autographed again by Daniel and Aaron and Lori. And um, it's really fun. I've never seen a script before. Yeah. And it's fascinating to see, like, they actually do say things like, you know, he watches as she walks away. The stage Lonely. direction. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I didn't yeah. know they have that. So right. Because uh, truly, if it didn't have stage directions, this would be like a 73-hour <laughs> show right here. Yeah. It, it was fascinating. And, you know. What writers? They're just good at what they do. And you know, things like this, of course, you can save and even frame oh, at yeah. some point because this is really special. Yes. When you decide to stop reading it for the 40 or 50th time. <laughs> I know, I know. And we even have my tote bag. So I do carry this around because people will often stop me and ask me what it is. <laughs> and then I get to evangelize. <laughs> get it? Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay, you heard it here first. <laughs> evangelize, a new word. Oh, I Hashtag love it. evangelize. We're going to have to put that <laughs> when we post this. It's a Brian Bird word. I can't take oh, credit. No. But okay. Well, we'll Brian we'll Bird, thank you. <laughs> that is, that is exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yep. Okay. Well, so we're going to take a little pause mm -hmm. from When Calls the Heart and admire as we pause. Admire. Because I'm leaving it so it's on everybody's <laughs> face up. We wouldn't want to bury anybody's faces. No. And now I'm going to move on to a completely Different type yeah. of show. Very different. <laughs> and we're going to move on to Rachel's <sighs> super fan show of the week, or of the month, I should say. Of my life. Of your of life. Okay. Well, not, I, not all of my life, I suppose. Freshman okay. year of college and beyond. Okay. That's a few years. You're yeah. a little younger. Freshman year is <laughs> not that far back, but... It feels like it was a long time away. I guess it wasn't really. <laughs> okay. So share with us. I'll let you introduce it. I would like to introduce you or reintroduce you, as it were, to Lost, which, although it may have had a troubling ending, <laughs> still remains to me one of the best character studies I've ever seen that really continued that character study through most of the seasons. Um, if you never watched Lost, it was this potent mix of drama and comedy and romance and action and science fiction, sometimes a little too science fiction towards the end, towards the latter seasons, but... There was not a character on the show that I did not have a strong opinion about, which is, you know, a huge part. And it, I was shipping before I knew what shipping was, um, which is when in a show that you like, you, tr you pair two people mm -hmm. and you think that they would have the best relationship right. on the show. My, my one true pair on the show was I don't know, Sawyer, who I think is the best character ever. Um, and I still consistently talk about Sawyer on a pretty regular basis. <laughs> And Kate, even though she went with Jack, which is a thing. <gasps> so Sawyer was, and Kate never got together? Yes and no. It, they did, but then it, it went in the future, and then she was with It was a thing. <laughs> okay. There was time travel. There were dimensions. There was a polar bear on an island. Which was very creative, by the way. <laughs> well, and it's, the thing that got me about Lost is there were all of these little mysteries. And even when you would find an answer to one mystery, it would add on a whole other layer of mystery. Like, oh, there's a polar bear on the island because of an experiment done by the Dharma Project. What's the Dharma Project? And then that would be explored in the next season. And then just when you think you have the answers, something new would come along. Right. Um, I think, unfortunately, they didn't necessarily kind of treat, not treat their fans well, but towards the end, it was just a little too much of like, you're very invested in this character in this mythology, but maybe toss that to the side a little and add a little zhuzh in there. And the zhuzh didn't really sit well okay. with a lot of people. Now, you know, I remember when the show first aired, mm -hmm. a lot of people joked it was the uh, 21st century version of Gilligan's Island. Oh, yes, I made those I, jokes. I, oh, you, I, okay. I okay. did. I was, my parents were watching the show. My sister was watching. I was like, come on. It's Gilligan's Island with an airplane. With an like, airplane who, instead of a boat. Yeah. Exactly. I was not even a little bit interested. And then I think it was the third or fourth episode. I was home for maybe Thanksgiving break or Christmas break. And I watched it. And I've never <laughs> looked back. It was incredible. 
Um, the episode was focused on Saeed Jara, who was a phenomenal character played by Naveen Andrews, who is one of my favorite actors. And it was just such a realistic for me portrayal of a character who was a member of the Iraqi Guard, um, but working against things. Um, he was a torturer and then realized that he, some of what he was doing maybe wasn't for the good of the people and was just mm. awful. And I just, I loved the way that it really gave each character a solid backstory. Which, well, my understanding yeah. is that besides the mystery, because it was a continual running mystery. Yes. There was always mystery in Lost. Mm -hmm. And that all the characters had really, really, really rich backstories. Completely. That you never had to question that they were just dropped in the show for some sort of dramatic <laughs> something. <laughs> some there was one episode that I'd let pe I like to forget about where that did happen, where characters were introduced that then were killed off like an episode later because the fan... But it, I, I honestly believe it was because the fandom was so angry that all of a sudden these characters were supposed to have been on the island, but we just never learned about them. It was a, and so they ended up killing them off by having them buried alive after being bitten by spiders. Ooh. Yeah. So Ouch. It, it, was, <laughs> yeah, it was not a peaceful end for them. Okay. But that was like the one exception. Every, like, for the most part, mm -hmm. The characters that you started with were the characters that you ended with. And there were some additions in there that brought in some of the mysteries, but you really became so invested in these characters, and I became invested immediately. One of the things I noted, which you don't see often, is, um, you know, thinking about you coming on for Lost, I looked on the IMDb site, mm -hmm. and the core characters all were on for every single episode. Yeah. You didn't wow. have... Yeah. Uh, one character went and took a nap on the other side of the island. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I understand it would be hard to not have them there, but they were on for every single episode, yep. the exact same number of episodes from date to date, from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. I think that says a lot. Absolutely. And it wasn't just one or two seasons. Um, I was kind of floored. I didn't realize how many episodes there were. Mm -hmm. There were a hundred, because I, I remember I thought 118 episodes. Yep. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a long run. Now, another actor on the show that I'm a big fan of is Daniel Day Kim. Love him. I think he's an outstanding actor. I loved him on the, um, the newer version of Hawaii Five-0 till he left not too and, long ago. And he actually learned Korean for the role. He did not speak Korean <laughs> before the show oh started. But um, the character that he was playing only spoke Korean. <laughs> so he learned Korean and learned to speak it well enough that he would be able to play the character. As if that's his first language. Yeah. That's, that's pretty intense. Yeah. That's pretty intense. Subtitles? Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, Sun and Jin, um, his wife played by Yun Jin Kim, were Korean and she spoke English, but it was part of her backstory because she was actually trying to escape him at one point oh. because they had a marriage that turned out to not be, that was wonderful, and when he started working for her father, who was a gangster, it turned south. So it became a big part of the backstory that he spoke Korean and she didn't, or and then she spoke English, uh -huh. which is she's a famous actress in Korea. So I just thought it was when I learned that it was really interesting to me that it kind of worked out that way that mm -hmm. he was the one that was speaking almost Korean exclusively for right. the majority of the show. And he's so multi talented because yeah. now he's he's producing mm -hmm. one of my shows that I've really grown to enjoy more and more and just restarted recently. Um, in the second half of the year, it's, it's uh, after the season hiatus break. Mm -hmm. uh, the Good Doctor, yep. he's the producer of The Good Doctor, starring Freddie Highmore. So this is clearly a talented cast. Absolutely. From years ago that is really building and building on their careers, and this is one piece yeah. of it. And, and one of the things that struck me even then was that this was one of the first shows I can think of with a large cast where it was a really, truly diverse cast. Right. We've Which seen ensemble time, casts. Right. We've seen ensemble casts. Absolutely. We've seen sci-fi shows and things like that, but it wasn't always a very diverse cast of characters. Sure. If you looked at the, uh, the typical ensemble, I always think back to the true ensembles would be Friends and Cheers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Pretty it's much a, the same it's person. It's a very same person in different <laughs> yeah. blondes and brunettes. Absolutely. That was it. And this, this definitely was very well-rounded. And you have some toys you brought. <laughs> yes, I do. I have a lot. 
So I have my Lost Chronicles with bonus DVD inside, which by the way, I have not opened because you do not open the DVDs. It is mint condition. Okay. <laughs> if my sister went near this book, I would freak out on her. And it's got script excerpts and it's got a lot of fun things in there that are behind the scenes. Um, I also have my action figures that my son will eventually open and I'll probably shed a small tear, but I'm not sure there's a huge market. These are my lost toys. And then I've, got, I've got some coasters. Some coasters. I'm kind of and jealous of the coasters. They're pretty great. <laughs> and I'm cool. going to sneak in now with my final piece from my fandom, which also I've made friends with and yeah. it's become wonderful, a show that started in 2000. I can't so believe So it's, it's a that old. much older show from Showtime, Queer as Folk. And I have my lovely little DVD set that's signed here also, like you have signed things as well. I loved meeting some of the cast members. Um, and this was between their third and fourth seasons. Oh, okay. And one of the things that was significant about this show is that it was a show that was born in England, mm -hmm. but the British version has absolutely other than the character's initial points of view, I would say, or mm -hmm. attitudes, very little to do with the American version of the show. They're not the same at all. Because the show in England was very much about the uh, sexual mores in the gay community um, in uh, Greater London mm -hmm. area. And then nothing really big in terms of romance. But in the US, if there's no romance, there's no show. Mm -hmm. That's just how this side of the Atlantic flows. <laughs> and so immediately, one of the things that was done was that the writers built in romance. Um, in fact, they built in unlikely romances, mm -hmm. not, not the ones that would have paralleled the English version at all. Um, the two women who are the lesbians, they were together in England and they're together mm -hmm. in the American version. But besides that, they had five uh, gay characters that really sort of changed mm -hmm. who you would have thought they were going to be with and demonstrated that not everybody would go with their typical match or who you like in the beginning is not who you're going to like later. Mm -hmm. And part of that, I do believe, was fan-inspired because they did get a very, very hardcore fan base mm -hmm. early on. I think part of it was because before this, and this is a very, um, I don't like using the word, um, let's not say graphic, but risque. Yeah. It was definitely groundbreaking in that way, which is why Showtime was a good place for it. Mm -hmm. As opposed, it wouldn't have been on network TV. Not at all. On network TV, what you had at the same time was Will and Grace, mm -hmm. which paled by by comparison. Um, so we had a really great show, and it showed its maturity also through its theme, because this had two openings. Mm -hmm. So to show the growth of the characters and that they weren't always going to stay party boys only in the discotheques, mm -hmm. they grew the opening theme. Um, and we have brought two, both themes with us <laughs> today, so you'll be seeing some of those. Um, and hopefully we'll have a little time to squeeze in both of them. So mm -hmm. you can see the parallel of the growth from the first mm -hmm. three seasons to the final two seasons, when you're now talking about grown-ups. One of the, the series stars is Sharon Glass from Cagney and Lacey, which is how I got engaged yep. in the show. Sharon Glass could sit and read a telephone book to me on screen, and I'd go for it. Yep. Um, and that's where I began, and what engaged me in the show, that and Hal Sparks, who was on E Soup. Uh -huh. um, and is hilarious. He's a comic, a stand up comic, so and I've funny. seen him do his comedy. Yep. He's hilarious. Um, and not all the actors on the show who played the roles were gay. And several of them decided not to say whether they were or not mm -hmm. because they were playing roles. It was, it was about the characters. And it was character driven for a good part of the series, <laughs> which is, in my personal view, the best part of the series. Absolutely. When the character driven parts were there, exactly. it was best. Yep. And the thing that strikes me 
about the fandom for queer as folk is this is really before the advent of social media. This is before Facebook. Like maybe you have a little bit of MySpace going on. The way I but... met people was Live Journal. Yeah. That's how long and Live Journal is it. Heard of it. Is, is it, it's not very well used anymore. But we had people who I've met yeah. and I'm still friends with from Australia. Yep. And because of the show, I, I started finding a place for writing that I do as well, mm -hmm. which was kind of fun. And I now write gay romance. And it started by watching this and saying, ah, this is really nice. And I can fantasize other romances happening because it was about the romance for me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just about the community, but the whole romance and intolerance. Mm -hmm. And they actually became more political as the years went on. Um, well, thank you, Donna, You're for welcome. joining thank Rachel you. and I today thank to you. share thank in you. our super fan. This, this half hour went by so fast because we're talking about things we're so passionate about. Absolutely. Um, and which is why we can go on and talk about them for another couple hours after we <laughs> say goodbye to all of you. You can find Carolyn Talks Television on all the platforms, and you could also see it on the YouTube page, Carolyn Topol Talk. And we will see you there and enjoy all your favorite shows and share them with us.